Hey there, Chester Gospel Church. Anyone else watching the video? Uh, before we do a short lesson, a couple announcements. Uh, church continues to be canceled and your board continues to anxiously wait for when we can meet together again. Also, Grandma's birthday is coming up this Friday, so please send her those birthday cards uh, in the mail as soon as possible so she can be blessed by them. Also, uh, continue to share with us any updates or needs that you have as our board members are calling you. And be sure to let us know if we can be lifting you up in prayer as well at this time. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you so much for uh, this time that we're going to be spending in your word and reflecting, Lord, on your character and who you are. Lord, work on us in these times. God, that will glorify you. Help us to be strong. Help us to be courageous. Help us to be full of your grace. Amen. So in Christianity, there's some of these phrases that you come into contact with over and over and over again. Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. All things work together for God's good. Or a famous one in scripture, you must be born again. Well, there's one I'm starting to hear a lot that I wanted to maybe talk about a little bit, and I hope it blesses you. And that's this, that is, God's light shines in the darkness. And there's a lot insinuated in this that, you know, if you're well versed in scripture, you might understand all the implications. If not, you may not. And so my hope is this will be a blessing to you that when you hear someone talks about the light of God shining in the darkness or guiding you at these times, that maybe you have a better idea of what people mean by that. Now, darkness and light, they're pretty popular concepts in our culture. You know, they may elicit pictures of you know, trying to navigate a dark cavern or, you know, that time when you turn the light off in your child's bedroom and they get scared of the dark, so now they need a nightlight. Or maybe you'll even be thinking about the Jedi and the Sith and Star Wars because light side and dark side and all that stuff. But when we're talking about darkness and light as it deals with Scripture, what does that mean? What is Scripture trying to explain to us about God and what do we do with that? As believers in Jesus Christ, understanding him to be the light, what does that mean for you and I? Now, while this may not be an exhaustive study, I do believe it's going to be one that will bless you. First off, when we learn about the light, as Scripture puts it, we're learning about the good and perfect character of God. And what I mean by that is we learn about this perfect nature of the Lord. There is no evil in him. There is no sin about him. He is uh, perfect, and he is and he is who he is all the time. He doesn't change. And as we look in Scripture, we even see that his good and perfect nature isn't compatible with this fallen world. And specifically, not even evil, but anything that is not from the Lord is incompatible with God because he is so pure, so perfect, so glorified. If you've ever read the book by C.S. Lewis, The Great Divorce, that's kind of the picture that C.S. Lewis is trying to draw, this idea of God's glory and his magnificence as it's displayed in heaven and how it's completely incompatible with that of the fallen soul. Even before you and I knew who Jesus Christ was, and before especially we had a relationship with him. Before we had a relationship with Jesus Christ, you and I were not compatible with God. Yet through Jesus Christ, not only does he enable us to be compatible with him, but we are then also united with one another in that. It's almost like a, an organ donor type of situation when you think about it. An organ cannot go into a body that is incompatible with. And sometimes steps need to be taken so that uh, the organ can be received. Now, you and I are souls. Given our human sinful nature, they are diseased. And they cannot handle the presence of God. So what has God done? Well, he sent us Jesus Christ. And through the work of Jesus Christ, and yes, through the spilling of his blood and the repentance of our sins and relying and trusting in his sacrifice, we are born again. 
We are made new creations, a creation which is compatible and acceptable by God. That when we die, we are in his presence. It does not obliterate us, but God accepts us. And it's what a beautiful gift of God's light, of his good and perfect and holy light, that he would even share it with us through Jesus Christ. Now, if you read with me, 1 John 1, 5 through 7, it says this, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So you see, God is good, and God is perfect. His light is in that character of who he is, his perfection. And Jesus Christ is that light in this life. And he has shared that with you for the forgiveness of all our sins. Next, when we look at darkness, darkness in Scripture uh, kind of talks about death and life that ends and leads to eternal death, aimless living without purpose, without it being tied to eternity, death that is experienced but does not continue on to the heavenly bliss that we can experience in heaven. This is, these are the warnings, these are the descriptions being displayed when we talk about darkness. Darkness is that which is either eternal death or the things that lead to eternal death separate from God's design of heaven with him. So scripture always tries to encourage us to be weary of darkness, not to fear the darkness in who Jesus, because we have Jesus Christ, but to understand the life that leads to this type of darkness, and then to lean on the light that comes only from the Lord. Luke 1, 78, through 79 says this because of our god's merciful compassion the dawn from on high will visit us to shine on those who live in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace now this particular verse is actually a prophecy given to the parents of john about jesus christ and jesus himself confirms this in his testimony when we look at John 8, verse 12. John 8, verse 12, this is what it reads. Jesus spoke to them again, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. So here's the picture we have so far. Our good and perfect God saves us through the good and perfect light that is Jesus Christ. And it is a perfect victory in Jesus Christ because darkness cannot overcome the light. And in that light of Jesus Christ, we are transformed no longer to live by the habits of the world or the habits of sin, but to live in light of who Jesus is. Ah, there's a pun. In light of the light of who Jesus Christ is not only to lead us into eternal life in heaven, but also to live as the light, as like Jesus Christ in this life. There is victory in the light of Jesus. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Had to switch something out. Uh, so let's get back to our topic. Why is it important then that we remember this light? I want you to take a second and imagine for a moment what it would be like to be in the middle of the ocean, like dead center. And then you look around, and what do you see? For miles and miles, nothing but water. And then you have a decision to make. Where do we go next? What direction do we pick? Amongst all the waves and the wind, you get lost, discombobulated, wondering, where do we go from here? 
Well, how do we go about picking a direction? The way you go about it is you find a fixed point. Now, if you're in the middle of the ocean, you can't you can't go with the wind because well, the wind changes. You can't go with the waves because currents change too. So what do you use to try to figure out your direction? Where to go from here? In, in earlier nautical forms of nav navigation, what they used was they used the light. And more specifically, they used the stars in the sky. Why? Because the stars are a fixed point. They're pure. They don't move to the left or to the right like waves or wind. They they remain. They're perfect. They're pure. They're exactly what they need to not only direct them through the water in their journey, but to get them to the land as well at the end. You see, Jesus Christ is to be that fixed point for us. Not only does he guide us through these hard times, but he also leads us all the way to where we need to go. He is good, he is perfect, he is pure, just like those stars in the sky that we follow and we navigate by. And we know that to not follow those stars is to commit ourselves to just wandering aimlessly in the middle of the ocean with really little chance of finding land before, before we die or drown. We need the star. We need that good and perfect light. We need in our lives, Jesus Christ. You know, with everything going on right now, I, I know I keep bringing it up every single video, but it's hard not to. And I think it's important that we do keep talking about what this is doing for you, for me, for the church. You know, so many things that we used to rely upon for distractions or to feel protected. You know, those things aren't what they were before. They've, they've changed or or in many cases, they've been canceled. I mean, I still remember when March Madness is, was canceled, and I was like, oh. I was looking forward to watching Michigan State play some basketball. And it completely cut through things off guard. But all those things that we used to rely upon, we, we realize now that maybe they weren't as reliable as they could have been. Or better yet, there's someone out there that we should have been relying on all along. My prayer is at this time, if you're at home or, or at work, that this becomes a time where we begin to focus our sights again on Jesus Christ the way we should have been all along. And in it could be in the terms of personal habits. Maybe this is the time where you start to build a new habit of studying Scripture. Maybe this is a time where you're building a new habit of praying with intentionality and expectancy that God is at work. Maybe you build a new habit of reaching out to your brothers and sisters in Christ or reaching out to your neighbor and loving on them, encouraging them, leading them to the Lord. Maybe this helps you set things in priority and perspective to help you reconcile with that one person or family that you know maybe, maybe you've had some beef with for a long time. But my prayer is that this will help us as the body of Christ. Yes, that this will help his church to be what the church is always meant to be. Focused on Jesus Christ, being the body of Christ, encouraging one another to be like Christ, to see his light, to be his light in this dark world. So let us remain focused on the light of Christ, the source of our life, that fixable point that does not move. So when we hear the phrase about our God that whose light shines in the darkness, it's our guiding light. It's our saving light. It's the source of all hope that we have in uncertainty. God bless you. And go in peace. And I look forward to when we're reunited.